Stannis has moved his remaining forces to the wall, where he is attempting to rebuild his power base. Using Jon as an intermediary, he demands that Mance Raider bend the knee and swear fealty to him so that he can recruit the wildlings into his army in order to crush Lord Roose Bolton and take back the North in his new campaign for the Iron Throne, while also trying to sway Jon to his side by claiming he will be avenging his half-brother's killer. When Mance ultimately refuses, Stannis orders him burned alive. Not willing to let Mance suffer, John Mercy kills him with an arrow to the heart as he's burned at the stake. Although Stannis was not pleased that John interfered with Mance's execution, he presents John an enticing offer. If John bends the knee and swears his loyalty to Stannis, the king will legitimize him as John Stark, making him the Lord of Winterfell. Stannis, after receiving a message from Lyanna Mormont, knows that having a Stark on his side is the best chance of rallying the Northerners to his cause. John is tempted by the offer, since he wanted to be a true Stark since he was a boy but he tells Samuel Tarly that he intends to refuse the offer. After John is chosen as the new Lord Commander, Stannis approaches him again about his offer of legitimization. However, John declines Stannis's offer and reiterates that his place is with the Night's Watch. He also reiterates the Night's Watch's neutrality in the affairs of the Seven Kingdoms. Although having a Stark pledged to his cause would have been a great asset, Stannis respects Jon's decision and intends to leave Castle Black and march on Winterfell within a fortnight. He also recommends appointing Alyssa Thorne as commander of Eastwatch by the sea. Later, Stannis witnesses Jon behead Janos Slint for refusing to obey an official command. He gives Jon a nod of approval from across the courtyard. Later, Stannis observes Jon training the new recruits with Selyse, who comments that he admires Jon. When she states that she believes that John was fathered on a tavern girl, Stannis tells her that it wasn't Ned Stark's way, implying he thinks there is more to the story of John's parentage than what is believed. Seeing Stannis look at John like a proud father would look at his son, Selyse laments that she was unable to bear him a son. Melisandre approaches Stannis and asks him if they will march on Winterfell soon. Stannis confirms they will since they must leave before the snows trap them. Stannis is later visited in his office by Shireen, who asks him if he is ashamed of her. Stannis tells her that when he was told that she had Grayscale and was advised to send her to the ruins of Valyria to live out her short life before her death, he took no notice and sent for every maester, apothecary, and healer to treat her, which led to them saving Shireen's life, because she is his daughter. Stannis and Shireen share a tender embrace. John tells Tormund he will talk to King Stannis about lending him his fleet to rescue the wildlings at Hardhome. Stannis is present in the common room of Castle Black when Jon Snow informs them of his plan to rescue the wildlings at Hardhome, correcting other Yawick's grammar. Later, Stannis finds Samwell, Tarly and Gilly in the library. Stannis voices his surprise at Samwell's appearance, having known his father to be a fine soldier as he defeated Robert at the Battle of Ashford. He asks him how he killed a White Walker and Samwell tells him he killed it with a dragonglass dagger. Stannis is aware of this material, stating he has obsidian on Dragonstone. Stannis recognizes the threat of the White Walkers and commands Samwell to keep reading, before departing the room. Stannis informs Davos that it is time to march, but Davos objects and asks him if it is not better to wait for Jon Snow to return from his mission with the Wildlings, as they could have thousands more men in their army. Stannis states that they have to move now, before winter arrives in earnest. Selyse and Shireen will join them, as Stannis does not think they will be safe at Castle Black. The following morning, his soldiers have gathered in the courtyard, getting ready to depart. Stannis tells Jon he hopes he knows what he is doing with the wildlings, as he needs his ships. Jon assures him that he will get his ships back, before thanking him and wishing him a safe journey south. Stannis mounts up beside Melisandre, and marches from the wall towards Winterfell with his army. However, the weather turns for the worse and a snowstorm delays his army. Davos reports to him that 40 horses have died and the Stormcrows, a sellsword company of 500 men, have abandoned them. Disgruntled by this news, Stannis picks up the piece off the war map, asserting that sellswords are loyal to nothing but gold, before tossing the piece away. They are also running out of food as they cannot open the supply lines until the snow clears. Stannis remains stubborn and refuses Davos's suggestion to return to Castle Black and wait out the winter there, on the basis that the winter may last several years and the Boltons will have strengthened their forces, especially since he was previously forced to flee from the Battle of the Blackwater. 
he maintains that be it to victory or defeat, they will march forward. Later, Melisandre speaks alone with Stannis and reminds him that they may need to sacrifice more king's blood in order to better their chances of winning the upcoming battle in the snow which they both saw in the flames, citing the deaths of Robb Stark and Joffrey as examples. When Stannis says that they have no chance of locating Gendry, Melisandre suggests that they sacrifice Shireen. Stannis is visibly shocked and disgusted by the suggestion, asking her if she has lost her mind. She tries to convince him by saying that Stannis must be the undisputed king when the long night comes, but he rebuffs her and orders her to leave his presence. Later, Ramsay Bolton and twenty men set fire to several spots in Stannis's camp. The result is the loss of men, horses, and nearly the entire food supply. Desperate, Stannis turns to Melisandre and he finally accepts her suggestion of sacrificing his own daughter by burning her at the stake. Before visiting his daughter a final time, in which they discuss the Dance of the Dragons, he sends Sir Davos back to the Wall to retrieve food from the Night's Watch, a deliberate order to prevent Davos from interfering in the death of Shireen, which Stannis seemingly understood would happen. Stannis hence carries out Melisandre's wishes, but not without reluctance. Shireen is tied to the stake, and begins to squirm and plead with her father for her life as she realizes what is happening. As she continues her pleas, the pyre is lit, and Shireen begins pleading for her mother to save her. At first, Selyse is convinced that this is the right thing, but she begins to have a change of heart as Shireen continues pleading. Distraught, Selyse's feelings change drastically, and she runs toward the stake in an attempt to stop the ceremony before she is herself restrained by Baratheon soldiers. Stannis remains unresponsive, but looks on in discomfort. As Shireen's screams die away, Selyse lets out a scream, as Stannis turns away with tears in his eyes. By the following morning, the snows are rapidly melting and Melisandre is elated. Stannis, however, is gruff, clearly still shaken by what he did. One of his generals reports that although they can now proceed to Winterfell, about half of their standing forces, including all of the sellswords, have deserted taking nearly all the horses with them. Another soldier reports that Selyse's body has been discovered hanging in a nearby copse of trees. She'd hanged herself in the night, unable to live with what she allowed to happen. Later, Stannis is hardly surprised when his general informs him that Melisandre has fled. Stannis is still determined, however, and orders the general to get the men into marching formation. Stannis leads his meager force to Winterfell and orders them to prepare for a siege but his general says there's no need, the Bolton army is meeting them on the open field. As the Bolton cavalry charges at his army, Stannis raises his sword as the armies clash. Stannis fights bravely, but the remnants of his host stand no chance. As the battle winds down, Stannis takes out two more Bolton soldiers, but his leg is severely wounded in the process. As he rests against a tree, he is found by Brienne of Tarth, who identifies herself and asks him if he used blood magic to murder Renly, whom she served in his Kingsguard. Stannis admits that he did and Brienne sentences him to death, in the name of Renly of the House Baratheon, the first of his name, and asks him if he has any final words. Acknowledging that his deeds have finally caught up with him, Stannis tells Brienne to do her duty, and she beheads him with her Valyrian steel sword, Oathkeeper, in a single stroke. Despite his death, however, Stannis manages to obtain a small victory over the Boltons by buying Sansa enough time to escape from Winterfell with Theon, severely weakening Roose Bolton's hold on the north, and ultimately leads to the extinction of the Boltons and the Starks reclaiming Winterfell. Melisandre eventually reaches Castle Black, where Jon immediately asks her where Stannis is, and her bleak expression is all Jon and Davos need to know Stannis is dead.